Hey, good morning, kids. It's Miss Lisa here, and I am so excited to be with you this Sunday morning so that we can get together and worship and um, have some fun. Of course, there's going to be trivia. There's going to be some songs playing, and there is definitely going to be some Bible time. So get ready, and um, let's get ready to have some fun.
If you were a tree, would you make yummy fruit or nasty fruit? Hey guys, it's me, Douglas, and I love the fall. Yeah, it is my favorite time of year. It's my favorite season because, because well, the the leaves on the trees are all turning yellow and red and and orange, and it looks so pretty. And the, and the leaves start to fall, and you can you can go jump in the pile of leaves, and it's so much fun. And and also, my family this time of year we always go apple picking, which is really fun. We get it, you know, get some baskets, and we go pick our own apples, and then they're really good apples too. And we can make some pies out of them, and, and we can go get some cider. And yeah, oh, I love it. It's a great time of year. And uh, really, one of the things that makes it the great time of year is the trees, what all the trees are doing. And, and I wanted to talk to you guys about trees today because, well, Jesus used them as kind of an example of us in our lives. And so, um, especially fruit, talking about fruit. So the Bible says that we should, we should bear good fruit. We should make good fruit. But, you know, it's not saying that we should, like, you know, grow a peach out of your cheek or something. You know, that's crazy talk. But no, it's talking, it's kind of like talking metaphorically because because just like just like a tree can make good fruit, and you can know it's a good tree by the fruit that it bears, you can tell that a person is a good person. Well, not just a good person, but a person is rooted in Jesus if the fruit of their life is good. Yeah, we call that the fruit of the Spirit. So the fruit of the Spirit is Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we call this the fruit of the Spirit because there's basically two different ways you can live. You can either live your life doing things exactly the way you want to do them. You know, just whatever pops in your head, that's how you live. And we call that living by the flesh. And the other way is you can do the things that Jesus wants you to do. You can live the life that Jesus wants for you. You can do the things that he likes, the things that he loves, the things that are important to him. And we call that living by the Spirit. So the fruit of the Spirit is what you get when you live God's way. And whether or not a tree is going to grow good fruit or bad fruit has everything to do with where it's planted, okay? Where, where it's getting its nutrients, where it's getting all the good stuff from. So, okay, so at my new house, we moved to this new place, and it has an awesome backyard, okay? It's a huge backyard, and there's so much stuff back there. There's all kinds of trees and stuff, but there's this one corner of this backyard where the people who had the house before us, they just kind of threw a whole bunch of garbage over there, and they, they dumped all kinds of weird chemicals and stuff, and, well, it was just really nasty. And, okay, so where I live, there's this kind of tree called a mulberry tree, and a mulberry tree, well, it makes mulberries, and mulberries are really yummy berries. They kind of stain your fingers a little bit, but they're so good, and you find them everywhere. They're in parks sometimes, and sometimes they grow in people's yards. And in this nasty corner of our backyard, sure enough, there was this mulberry tree growing. And my dad, he told me and my brother, he said, do not eat the berries off of that tree in the corner. That is bad, bad fruit. You do not want to eat that stuff, okay? I'm very serious. Don't eat it. And so, yeah, we did what we were told. We did not eat the berries off of that off of that tree in the corner. And one day we saw it, we were watching, and there was this bird that kind of flew in, and it was like, tweet, 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 tweet. And it landed on the tree, and it, it kind of nibbled on some of the on some of the berries. It was like, nom, 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 nibbled on the berries, and then it, it started to fly off, and it was like, it was like, tweet, 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 tweet. And it fell right out of the sky, dead. Yeah, it died because it ate those poisonous berries. Those berries were so poisonous, it killed it like right away, which was pretty scary. But, you know, that stuff, that mulberry tree, it looked okay. And the berries, they looked fine, but they were not good. And if we only live our lives doing what we want to do and we don't care at all what God wants us to do, then we're going to be like that nasty mulberry tree. We're going to have bad stuff coming out of us because we're not filling our lives with the good things of Jesus. And see, that tree, it was picking up all the nastiness and all the poison and all the muck in the ground that it was growing up out of, and it was putting it inside of its berries, and, and, and the, the fruit from its life was nasty fruit. But if that tree had been planted, you know, maybe by a stream of water, and, you know, it was really nice ground and really nice water, and it could get some good sunlight, then it would make really good fruit, really good mulberries. 
And if we live according to what God wants for us, if we live according to the Spirit, then we're going to have the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. We're going to have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All those good things are going to be just coming out of us as naturally as, as good fruit comes out of a good tree. And, you know, if you've never made the decision to root yourself in Jesus, to plant yourself in Jesus and give your life to him, I, I'd encourage you to do that because it's it's really the most important thing you can ever do. And if, if you'd like to learn exactly how you can do that, um, please talk to maybe a Christian that you know. Maybe there's a Sunday school teacher or a pastor or, or maybe a grandma and grandpa or a mom or dad. Anybody that you know that's a Christian, they would love to walk you through that. And I would love for you to go find them and to walk through that with them because it is the most important decision you can ever make. And I want you to make it with somebody that you know. And so my challenge to you guys today is that you guys would plant yourself firmly in Jesus Christ. You get all the good stuff that comes from living according to the Spirit, living according to God's will, so that you could bear good fruit. Bye, guys. Hey, welcome back. I hope um, that you enjoyed our worship time. I am here with my Bible, and you just saw a video um, with Doug. He's one of my favorite little guys. Um, I think that um, Doug loves to share stuff in the Bible, and I think it's um, fun listening to him and hearing what he has to say. I know a few weeks ago, uh, maybe a little longer, we were talking about the fruits of the Spirit and how important it is to bear fruits, and like Doug said, it's not real fruit. It's not like a peach coming out of our cheek or anything, but they're fruits of the spirit. As we get closer to God, we um, bear these fruits like self-control and he said joy. He said he named them all for us. Anyway, but today I'm going to read to you a little bit about um, being rooted in Christ. Just like Doug mentioned in his little video, how, how can we be rooted in Christ? And it says in the Bible in Colossians chapter 2, chapter um, starting on verse 6, it says, and now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith where's my, will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. So that's the verse that we're going to read. And I'm not going to share too much because I know that um, you've already heard a little bit of what Doug had to say. But I am going to draw something and I am going to see if you can see it. And it's just going to give you like a little visual on what it means to be rooted in Jesus. Right. So I'm going to turn the video. Let's see if I can make it work. I'm going to turn it around and I am going to um, show you what I'm doing. And if you can see here, I have my my stuff here and I am going to show you what I am going to draw. So I am going to draw here this is going to be my grass right okay so that's grass and then here is going to me be my tree now i'm not the best drawer but i'm going to show you my tree and i'm trying to do it one hand because i'm holding the phone with the other hand but that's my tree right so let's say i don't know let's put some fruit on there i'm gonna put some fruit on this tree these are my apples can you see them i'm trying to show you these are my apples on the tree and I am going to um, show you what it means to be rooted. So just like, okay, you have your tree. Now, this is all we can see, right? But here in the bottom are all these roots, right? So here's a root. Let's say this is a root. All these roots are here, right? See that? They don't look too pretty, but these are all roots, right? So here now... When the tree is a baby, the tree has little roots, right? So when we, we become Christians, we have like our baby roots. But as we continue to, um, let's say, read our Bible, right? So read the Bible. Read Bible. So as you read your Bible, this root is going to start growing, 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 growing. Here as you, um, um, what else? What's another example? I'm going to say going to church. When you're going to church, you go to church and as you go to church, you um, fellowship with people, you meet with everyone, all your fellow Christians, and they help walk with you in your walk of the Lord. Here's um, another one is um, doing good things, right? Doing good things at home, build, having a good heart. Having a good heart is another one. So there are uh, a lot of different ways that we can continue to build our roots. And then as we read our Bible, as we live Christian lives, our roots just get stronger and stronger. So when, let's say, 
if you see the top like if the winds come or if um bad things happen to us and i'm gonna bring it back and i'll show you the little video as things happen to us in our life like let's say if there's bullying or if there's some bad stuff on social media that doesn't um you know that pulls us away from the things of god if your roots are strong like my picture which is not the prettiest picture but if your roots are strong we're going to stay strong in our faith with god and we're going to continue to love him and have that relationship so i'm going to read the verse again so that you can remember it. it's in colossians 2 chapter chapter 2 verse 6 it says and now just as you accepted christ jesus as your lord you must continue to follow him let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him let your faith grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness so i won't keep you too long because i know that we've had already some time in our um morning worship but remember i am continuing to pray for you i miss you all so much i can't wait to see you all back at church i know i see some of you but some haven't came back yet um i can't wait to see you all and i'm praying that you have um a good time at school whether it's home or at school or wherever it may be i'm praying that god gives you the strength to continue to do good always do your best and remember always be good to mommy and daddy i say that all the time respect your mommies and daddies and make sure you listen to them and i hope you all have a great week and i will see you next week god bless you bye